I suppose that the question was, was bound to come up. It had not been long after my kids started school that someone asked my daughter Hannah when she was in kindergarten, so who do you go for? She, well, not being born down here, was completely confused as to what the right answer was, or for that matter, even what they were asking her. But if you were raised down here, when someone asks you, who do you go for, you got to tell them who your team is. Now, I'm fairly certain most of my kids, when they ask, who do you go for, they say the Packers. Because, as we all know, it's God's team. I mean, even Alabama players played it for the Green Bay Packers. So that really tells you. I suppose it's like that in a lot of different areas of life, right? You talk about uh, a, a child that a, a family friend has, and without a whole lot of time going by, a young child is bound to ask the question, well, where do kids come from? Right? You, you, you are set in those different positions or those different situations in life where you know there are just questions that are bound to come up. Where we catch up with Jesus in our gospel lesson, he's on his way to Jerusalem to suffer and die. He's been preaching and teaching people for almost three years at this point. And so it was a question that if someone is preaching and teaching uh, about the kingdom of God and how a person gets to heaven and the forgiveness that this promised Savior was going to bring, it was a question that was, was bound to come up. And we hear someone ask it of Jesus on his way to Jerusalem. He says, Lord, are, are only a few people going to be saved? And, and Jesus' answer to the man reminds us that while heaven is wide open, right, God wants people from, wants all people from all corners of the earth to be with him in the There's also only one way to get there. There is a, a narrow door to that wide open heaven. And so Jesus, as he answers and seeks to answer this man's question, points out that narrow door to a, a wide open heaven. And he says, I'm it. That, that door, that narrow door that Jesus is talking about is a symbol or a, a picture of Jesus himself. Right? Jesus said the same thing a number of other times in his ministry. As he was t teaching and, and talking to his disciples once, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Right? Jesus was pointing at himself and saying, the only way to heaven is through me. This time he uses the picture of a, of a great feast. Right At the end of the gospel lesson, we hear how there's this great feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and people from all corners of the earth. And to get into that feast, you had to go through this narrow door. A door that, that's narrow in that only one person enters. It's not, say, like the gates at Bryant-Denny or Jordan-Hare Stadium where there are not only multiple gates, but wide open gates to get hundreds of thousands of people in and out, right, in, in, a, in, a, in a short amount of time. No, the way to this feast in the kingdom of God is narrow. In fact, you enter it individually through Jesus. And because of that, Jesus encourages his disciples, he encourages you and I to make every effort to enter through the narrow door. Because many, I tell you, will try to enter and not be able to. Right? He tells us to make every enter effort to enter through the narrow door. Now that's not because it's going to be a struggle, because we've got to be pushing other people out of the way in order to get in. But to make every effort, and it's going to, to be a struggle, is, is the picture there because of all the things that are going to try to keep us out. And my guess is you've already begun to see and experience those struggles in life. Right? The, the, the temptations that, that the devil himself puts in front of our path in order to, well, to keep us from coming here, to hear God's word. Faith strengthened, right? The excuse 
I put in our own minds about why we aren't in Bible study or why our kids aren't in Sunday school. Right? All opportunities we have to grow in our faith and to be making every effort to enter through that narrow gate. You can think of all the, the sin that's part of our, our life and how sin distances us from our God. It shows a rebellion that's, that's in our heart and that seeks to keep us from that feast in heaven. And so Jesus urges his disciples, he urges you and I to make every effort to struggle against those things so that we enter through the narrow door. Because there's a lot at stake, isn't there? If it's only through Jesus, and it's only through that, that narrow door of our Savior and accomplished for us, well, not only is eternity at stake, but there isn't other ways that I get there. In fact, Jesus continues on and gives us a, a rather strong warning, doesn't he? He says, he goes on to say, because the time will come when that door is closed by the owner of the house, and people will be standing outside knocking and pleading, Sir, open the door for us. But he will answer, I don't know you or where you come from. And then you will say, we ate and drank with you and you taught in our streets, right? So there's people that are, are at that narrow door entrance when the door has been closed. And they're saying, well, we knew you. We heard you teach. Right? People who, well, saw the church on their corner heard Christians talking about who Jesus is and what he had done. Maybe they even came to church but really didn't believe who had those things go in one year out the other but really only came so that they would be, well, they'd be, they'd be seen. But really never took those truths to heart and trusted in Jesus as their Savior and suddenly the door closes and they're on the outside looking in. And what do they see? Believers gathering together with their Savior. The, the Savior who came and, and lived and died for them. The Savior who, who took their sins away. They see believers who entered through that narrow gate of Jesus Christ by, by trusting and believing in him. And they're on the outside. Because there's only one way in. And it's through that narrow gate of, of Jesus. And if you and I, well, if we don't struggle against our sin and those things that try to keep us out, or if you and I think that somehow because of what we do or who we are, we're going to end up in that kingdom of heaven, well, we're mistaken because really that's the point Jesus was making to the man who asked. That the Jews in Jesus' day had thought that people were going to get to heaven simply because they were members of Abraham's family. And there were other religious teachers in Jesus' day who believed they were going to get to heaven because of what they did. Right? There were rabbis who were teaching that finally all Jews everywhere were going to be saved. And there were Jews who believed that when the promised Messiah would come, he would come and free them from their sin. And because of that, they would enjoy that eternal rest with their heavenly Father. I suppose it's no different today, huh? Where we have people who believe that they are going to be saved because of what they do and who they are. There are people that are, who believe they are going to be in heaven because, well, they come to church every Sunday and because of what they do and the impression that they give, things are going to be okay. There are some people who think there's all sorts of different ways to heaven, all sorts of different gates to get there. And Jesus blows all of those out of the water, doesn't he? And says, there's a very narrow door to that wide open heaven. And it's only through me. So make every effort to enter through that narrow door. In essence, his encouragement is rather simple, isn't it? Don't delay, but strive now to enter through that narrow door. Because that not only because of the eternal life that's for us, but because heaven is wide open. And Jesus encourages us the same way too, right? He, he goes on and he says that people will come from the north and the south, from the east and the west, that this, this heaven isn't just for God's chosen people in the Old Testament, the Jews, but it's for people from 
all over the world for you and me and for the people that you and I talk to. Because you and I, because we believe and have because of the trust that we have in our hearts and what our Savior has accomplished for us and the forgiveness that he's won for us, because you and I of God who stand before God not only forgiven but made perfect by Christ, you and I know the narrow door, don't we? You and I know that one way to that eternal feast that's waiting for us in heaven. You and I know the, the one way to eternal life. And now he calls us to share it because Jesus wants people from all over, from the north and from the east and the west, to be part of that eternal feast. Now, that doesn't mean that you and I become missionaries to distant land. It might. But that isn't necessarily what God has called us to do. Instead, he's called us all around you. I have put people who need to hear about this narrow door. It might be family. It might be friends. It could be neighbors. It could be co-workers. It could be people that you see at the gas station somewhat regularly. Who knows? But he's put people around you so that you have opportunity to share that good news. So that you can point out to people that narrow door to a wide open heaven. And it's a narrow door you know because you've walked through it. As children of God, that eternal life is already ours, isn't it? Our eternal life is ours because we've walked through that narrow Jesus Christ. We trust and we believe that our sin is forgiven and that because of that, eternal life is ours. Now, boldly share that good news. Point people to that narrow door and to the wide open heaven that stands on the other side. Amen. And the peace of God, which goes beyond our understanding, will guard and will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Our Savior Lutheran Church is located on the south side of Birmingham off Highway 280. We are on Dunnett Valley Road, about three quarters of a mile east of Treetop Family Adventure and Sports Blast. Our Sunday services begin at 1015 with Sunday School and Bible Class at 9 o'clock. We welcome visitors and hope to see you soon. For more information, please visit our website at OurSaviorBirmingham.com. Click on Sermons at the top of the page for a copy of today's service folder. You can also find us online on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.